Oh, I'm pretty excited. Look what I got. New tool. Let's just dig in. A lot of tape to cut. What could be in here? I'm pretty sure it's watch related. It's a time grapher. What's a time grapher, you may ask? Well, it's a device. Ooh, it's nicely heavy. This is a device that you uh, put a wristwatch on or a wristwatch movement, and it will plot the strength, the beat rate, all of the things that you need to assess whether or not a mechanical watch is running strong and running accurately. This is the uh, 1900 model. This gives you a full color display and uh, very good sensitivity. This is the upgraded model and uh, this is the unit that you strap either the um, wristwatch onto or the wristwatch movement and it has several different positions so you can see how that watch is running in the different positions. There's a microphone here. This microphone plugs into this uh, central control unit and it listens to the ticks and the talks of the watch to give you the overall health and let you know whether or not your watch is running strong and whether it's keeping good time. So let's plug this thing in and, and let's fire it up and let's give it a try. Okay, it's plugged in. Let's power it up for the first time. Uh-oh, that's not a good start. Wait, wait! Oh, look, there's an inline switch. Got me kind of panicked there. There we go. It blinked. It's glowing red. Well, it's glowing red. Let's see, start, stop. Beat rate auto detect. Awesome. I think the only thing missing right now is a wristwatch. Let me go get a wristwatch. We're going to give this a try with my Omega Speedmaster. Now this watch is, I'm pretty sure, from the early 1970s or mid 1970s. I've had it since 1979 and between you and me, I've never had it serviced. I haven't worn it in a long time. I just recently started wearing it again. We're going to give it a good wind. Seems to be running pretty well. And now I just have to figure out how we attach it here. How does this work? Well, that's spring-loaded. That's a good start. Okay, let me figure this out here. Ah, here's what I'm going to guess. The movement, let's see if we slip this over here. I'm going to guess that we, oh, I don't want to scratch that. You know what? Yeah. Put something on it here just to protect it. Oh, do you hear that? There's a heartbeat. Look at that. It's it's just hanging off the time grapher. Wait a minute. Come here. Come here. It's stuck. Okay. The patient died. No, I'm just kidding. So let's do this. I don't want to scratch my watch. And uh, it looked like that metal claw on there was kind of scratchy. So there we go. Now let's see if it, if it picks up. Well, something's happening. And I'm reading the numbers. Okay, so this first number, plus 17 or plus 19 seconds per day. So it's running a little bit fast. That's okay. Um, amplitude, that's how strong the watch is ticking. And 250, I think that's pretty good. The beat error, um, 0.9 milliseconds. This is the difference between the tick and the talk, and you want this to be as low as possible. 
and then this is the uh, the angle. I'm not quite sure what that means. And the beats is uh, 21600. I'll have to look up to see if that's right. So here's the deal. What you ideally want is for this high set of dots and low set of dots, you want that uh, line to be as close to each other as possible. And in this case, it actually looks pretty good. The, um, the tick and the talk part of the lines are very close to each other. And the slight ascension of this line means that the watch is running just slightly fast. As you can see here, uh, it's going quick by about 20 seconds a day. But that's entirely manageable. Like I said earlier, this watch has not been cleaned um, or serviced in quite some time. And here, let's see what happens if we, if we turn it around. Let's see, does it rotate? Well, we can go face down. I wanted to go face up so you could see it. Okay, so here we go. We're getting a redraw. And interesting, in this position, you can see that the beat error has gone up. It's 1.6 milliseconds, which means that the watch is running a little bit more erratic in this straight up and down position. Now, just for giggles, here I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this. Just kind of put it like that. Let's see if that changes. Now, did you see that little bump? That's kind of where it's settled. So this is kind of the position where you would be checking your watch like this. And again, it's running a little bit fast and there's a little bit of a beat error, but the amplitude is strong, 268. That's nice. That's how much of an arc the, uh, the balance is bouncing back and forth inside the watch. So 279 degrees, I'm really happy. That is a strong pulse this watch probably just needs a cleaning, a reassembly, some lubrication, and I'll bet we can get the uh, beat error down and we can then go in there and we can adjust that rate. So there you have it. It's pretty straightforward. I, I like the display on this Weishi number 1900 multifunction time grapher. Um, I look forward to digging into it and, and learning not just how to use the equipment, but how it relates to the watch and you know how a good servicing and adjustment can help us get this line completely horizontal and get that beat error line, those two parallel lines, close together, hopefully overlapping so the difference is invisible. So I see that we have two nice close together lines right here, but there's some schmutz underneath those lines. Okay, all this information, all this data, I'm sure is relevant. I don't know what it means yet, but I look forward to figuring it out. This is a multifunction time grapher, and with this, we will be able to uh, time and assess the health of our mechanical movements. Hey, I'm going to try to fit in here. This is Mike. Thank you for watching. Be good, be well, and be safe. And I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.